Okay. Right. Uh, is my screen visible? I am. Yeah, I am yeah. Okay. yeah, it's visible. Okay. Uh, so welcome everybody. Let's get started with session seven of this year. So our topic for this week will be to make an obstacle avoiding system with the Arduino. Um, we'll be getting into the details of it in, in today's class. So the materials required is actually if you have been doing our classes since session two. Or even if you have been doing your classes in session five, then you will already have all the required materials you will need for this project. I just go over the project and name. Ki, what's the name? Uh, it's this one, uh, obstacle avoiding car. Oh, 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 I made it already, so no. Problem. Uh, it's, this is it's a simple version. Actually, we'll be going on with the more complicated version um, after boards. So just for a. Um, um, just for information, at uh, this project, you guys can submit after boards because class 10 boards are starting from next week, I think. Or next Sunday, is it? You guys can submit this after boards. We'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be hosting classes after the boards anyway. So yeah, that's the topic of the project. Uh, the materials you guys will be requiring are the Arduino Uno. That's the standard one. The ultrasonic sensor that you guys purchased for your last project, that is the dustbin one, okay? The same, the same uh, model. Just uh, pull it out. It's not really that difficult to pull uh, it out. Can I use infrared? Uh, like, uh... Uh, you can, but I would prefer if you guys use the ultrasonic one because infrared will be using in future projects, and we don't want to buy it now. You know what no, I mean? No, I have it. I'm just. Uh, just... Uh, no, 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 no. Just, uh, just do what we're doing now because you will be using them in the future anyway. So just uh, stick with what we are saying. Um, I mean, this project, you guys will be having the most freedom in this project because it is the first in line of the, well, end term projects that you guys will be doing. Because still now, what we have been doing in the club is that is, we have been teaching you guys the very basics um, and we haven't gone up to the intermediate immediate level that much so that we can now trust you guys to like start building your own ideas, your own projects and to give it a spin on of yourself. But for the uh, main component, that is the um, main theme of it, just use the ultrasonic sensor. Don't go for the infrared right now. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's keep going. Uh, you will be using the L20, L29 3D motor shield. That is the one we used in our session two of, of our sessions. Okay. So it's the uh, L29 3 motor shields, uh, jumper wires, and a cardboard. Or if you guys have what I what I used was I used my old uh, phone's box, which, which it came in. I just cut up the top part of it. That's a really hard and nice cardboard to cut through to pass the wires through, right? So you guys should, you guys, if you, if you guys have, you guys can use that. Phone covers, too. but uh, they no, they are too not, small, no, I guess. Not, not phone cover, like uh, you know the box in which your phone comes in. Oh, like the, the boxes. Like the really hard plastic, yeah. the really hard cardboard. Sorry. And yeah, that, I, uh, yeah, that yeah. I, I, a, I did the same. Yeah, that acts as a really good base actually. So you guys, you guys should use that if you have it, of course. And of course, uh, jumper wires. Uh, now you guys may find a mini breadboard in Amazon. We'll be sending the link in the server servers too. So that's not an issue. Um, yeah, you guys can use the mini breadboard. We'll be explaining the use of it later on in the session, but that's an optional piece. A uh, nine volt battery. You guys can also use the um, seven point two five volt standards with with the three one point five volt batteries. Uh, sorry, three two point five volt batteries. You guys can also use that combination as well. Okay. Yeah, and that's basically the power supply of this whole system. Then uh, DC motors with wheels. You need uh, one pair of these. That is just two DC motors on each side. Because uh, it's actually a lot easier to because control. Because half the power right. might go, I think, Ex will uh, go yeah, into that, the ultrasound. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's power saving, and it's also easier for the and it's also a smaller code to write if you want to make the car turn at the um anyway. And you guys need a caster wheel. A caster wheel is basically um, you guys know what a, what a ball bearing is, right? Yeah. I'll yes. show you guys the picture. Okay, so you guys can see my entire browser window, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'll just show you guys what a caster wheel is. This is this thing. Uh, actually, this one. I want you guys to buy this one. It's, it's exact thing because um, it's twenty rupees. Yeah, it's twenty. You can buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. It's a chandni too. It's I because uh, because you, as you're using the two wheels, it is will be hard to keep balance. So if you just keep this at the front, you can just act, act as a yeah. ball bearing to like make it a bit more easier to move around in. But is is it the uh, height of the two wheels? 
like just, uh, no no it can it can it can lean line, forward right. it can lean forward it's fine it will, it, yeah, it just yeah, it will lean off. forward that's that's uh, what i'm saying and a double sided tape and sold and a soldering iron is is um well preferred actually okay let's get on with it okay so the logic of the code will be it's a very simple code actually the motors will be constantly running so the very first moment for, or if you're using a switch from um, the very so first I moment think it, you need a switch you may you may you should use a switch actually or you can just unplug the power supply or just take out the battery if you want to cut off the circuit that itself that should be should be that should be a little chaotic because if i'm just uh, testing yeah. and the moment i put in the battery it starts it yeah sure use a switch it's up to you i'm saying this this uh, starting from now this projects are going to be more inclined towards your creativity so how you, you can approach things is up to you yeah using a switch is a better option but then again you can you can just go without it it's fine so the how the how the project will work is the motors the motors will always be running so from from whenever you the uh, switch is flicked or the battery is in place the motors will keep on spinning and the system will go forward now the sensor will be putting it in front of the entire system so when it senses an obstruction or an object at a specified distance it will give a signal to the arduino that is the function and it will give out the output as it will um, speed up one motor at one side and then put the uh, other motor on the other side in reverse so that it uh, rotates basically and when it finds that there is no so no more distance it will again put tell both of the uh, motors to go in the forward direction which will make it go forward and rinse and repeat as so it will basically go into a circular motion if it is surrounded by objects of all size let me visualize it a bit better if you look at the code actually anyway that's the logic of the code um that's just a rough circuitry i do it is the same as that of the last class there is the 9 uh, volt battery which is connected to the ground and the vcc is connected to that of the servo and the trig input and echo that's what we did in the last in the um, last classes just same as that ground is same is as it is and the motors can be placed into any port you want i just put them into 2 3 4 and 2 3 4 and 5 6 just for the ease of it and the ln293 uh, tinker card doesn't actually give us a motor shield to work with so i just gave it here as a reference point uh, it will be going through the motor itself the motor shield itself so you have to work around that you have learned it in your session uh, what was it 4 or 5 anyway uh, that time you guys in activity where if you remember you used the motor shield to make a motor spin for 5 seconds and stop and then spin again the, uh, the apparatus will be the same as there It'll only this time there will be two motors so just follow what you did back then and do it again so i'll be sharing the code for the project just give me, give me a second now this isn't the code that you guys will be following because i have just made a mock up code of whatever that i think should have should have should have been the code or the basic basic concept of it of it at least just give me a second okay um so is my id open hope you guys can see my id yeah Mm-hmm. Okay, so we are um, yeah, so yeah. just the standard thing. We are in- including the Adafruit motors, and we are um, declaring each of the pins at which our motors are connected to as as what I have written three, four, five, six, and trigger and echo pin at nine and eight. You guys don't and shouldn't use what I have done here because I have just written it as an example. It's, it's a very rough mockup. It's just to give you give you guys an idea of how the code should be structured, not exactly how the code should be written. Okay. Now that you guys have to write the code from your from yourselves now because what this project is doing is basically it is just recycling what you guys have learned previously and just applying it somewhere else. Simple as that. Okay, so let's let that's it for our global constants. Let's go to void setup. In void setup, we are this is just as we've done before. We are putting tra- our trigger pin as an as an, out, as an output pin or an echo pin as an input pin, and we are putting all of our motor pins as output too. then we are declaring two variables that is the duration and distance as long type variables now we go over to void loop we are declaring these variables so that they can be used in the void loop code itself okay now this part if we, um, you guys should remember in last class we have we had done the same thing and even in the uh, qu- in the question paper we gave you guys in session i think it was session 7 so it was session 6 in the question paper we gave you guys in session 6 it had the same question so if you guys forgot i'll just say it once again This piece of the code is, yeah. This piece of the code is for you guys to calculate the distance at which the object is. This is used by the sensor of sensor of the object anyway. So what this does is that it is 
again uh, putting the trick pin as low and putting the trick pin as high to send out a send out an input and then it is uh, putting the echo echo pin at as high so it can uh, take in the in the in the input that was uh, given out by a trigger by a trigger pin then it is putting it through a mathematical formula you guys don't have to know the actual understanding of this because you have to learn some physics for it and then it will give us the distance in centimeters now now comes our part we have to work with the if statements and the motors so if this but you did uh, uh, but you did give a question uh, about this line why uh, yeah we did uh, why is it in duration no no, no. we gave a much simpler explanation back now i'm just saying that in short why we are using this formula no no talking about formula talking about oh. this part i uh, just forgot about that anyway so if distance is less than 20 that is this is when obstacle is at a distance of 20 centimeters. I can give 20, you guys can give 30 or even 10. Uh, it's, prefer, it's preferred if you guys keep it, give it a distance over 20 so it it has some time to actually st stop the car before it crashes into it because who knows how fast the car may move. Um, in some case it, it may be a bit too fast and you just end up breaking your sensors or something. This block of code is for when an object is found at a distance of 20 centimeter from our sensor. So it is telling our right motor uh, rmf rbm it is right motor forward it is right motor backward left motor forward left motor backward this is just for the sake of your understanding you guys have done a code similar to this before just follow that and you'll be fine okay so right motor forward at high but left motor backward at high this will turn our entire system to the left okay try and imagine that you are just on a what do you call, what do you call this thing a segway no not segway Hoverboard, yeah. You imagine you're, on, you're like on, on a hoverboard, and the right wheel is moving forward, and the left wheel is moving backward. So it will turn to the left, right. Hope you guys can understand the understand the mechanic behind it. Why we are telling it to go forward and this to go backward. Right goes yeah. forward, left goes back. Right, it just turns in this direction. This simple. And then we're telling it to wait for uh, ten seconds, and then it will, if not, that is, if the, if there isn't an object. It will just simply go forward. So right motor forward and left motor forward. You can even put this at the front and put this first and this um, behind it. But this is better to give because you are first uh, defining a distance from it. And then we are telling if there is, isn't anything in the distance, you just keep going forward. And this will keep on going. Um, well, as I've said before, until the battery is pulled out or the switch is uh, switched off. We're just giving a delay 100 or even a 10. It doesn't matter. We're just giving it for the, for the stability of the code. You should give it. You can even comment it out if you want to. But I prefer to give a delay at the end of these types of code just for stability. Because the system may just burn out in some cases. It's not that prevalent. Anyway, that's the code actually. It's a, it's a extremely short code for what seems to be a pretty... Actually, not a, a decently complex project, if I may say so. Um, I mean, uh, the uh, building I mean, is, is decently complex. I mean, it is basically what we have done in all all throughout a session till date. We are just using what we have learned and we're just literally reapplying them. Like in this case, we just literally almost cop copy pasted the entire code um, from our last project because we, we have to use the uh, same formula and the same function for the sensor. And we are using these from our session that's team. Anyway, um, so does anyone have any doubt with what the code is supposed to be in, or does anyone have any doubt with any specific part of the code? Let's see. Are no, uh, no doubts. All right, fine, fine. Okay, so that's it about the code. Um, hope you guys don't have any doubt. You guys shouldn't be copying this code. You have to write the code yourself. This is just a mock-up code to tell you guys that uh, declare variables here, declare the void setup here, what to, what to write in the void loop and how to write it. Uh, you have to declare all your variables by yourself, all your functions by yourself, your distance by yourself, delay, it's all up to you, okay? Anyway, that's it with the code. Uh, we'll be moving on to our slides again, so I'll just stop sharing my screen and share the PPT. Okay, uh, back back to the slides. I hope the screen is now visible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, how to build the project? So, as I said before, this from now on, you guys will be having freedom in how you how you want to approach your projects, um, how you uh, what variables you want in them, what code you want to write, how you want to write the code, how you want to structure your code, how you want to structure your project too. 
Um, so I'll just give you guys the basic rundown of what a stereotypical project like this should be. So the basic rundown is that there, um, it should be a flat board with two DC motors attached under it with a caster wheel attached at the front of it and above it should be the arduino and the motor shield combo the wire should be going from underneath the cardboard up to the Ar up to the arduino and up arduino, arduino and shield combo and in front and the sensor should, should be in front of the card because that's where it will sense the obstacles it will sense the opt obstacles send a signal and then turn the and then turn, tell the motors to turn themselves this may seem a bit complicated just to hear and one more thing uh, you guys should buy some header pins because uh, yeah, you guys should buy some header pins because you may have to solder some pins onto your Arduino shield. If, any, if anyone has any doubt of how you want to solder, uh, how you uh, how you should solder into header pins, it's actually a decently simple process. Um, I can show you, or you guys can just literally search it up on YouTube. You can find hundreds and hundreds of videos, and it's not really that hard. Just turn the shield over. Uh, you put the pins in, and you just solder. And the soldering part in this one is can be a bit because well, the part of the solder is pretty small and the surface area has to be pretty tight and there shouldn't be any mis any misconnections or the circuit may just short out. I actually made a blender model for you guys to understand if you guys are having any doubt in how you should approach this part that is the building part at least. Okay, so can you guys see my blender? Yeah. Okay, so um, this is just a mock-up I wrote no, not even like 15 minutes ago. Anyway, so this part that is the base in which everything is standing in, that is the cardboard. It's a uh, well this one this one is extremely disproportionate, so just go about what I'm feeling about it. Uh, these legs on uh, underneath the cardboard are the DC motors as explained by the wheels. They are going on the DC motor itself. This part is the caster wheel. Just so you guys can understand, if this is, this is the cardboard, there are motors here and here, and the caster wheel in the front, so it's easy for it to rotate. Uh, going on the, the more, of, uh, we are, uh, the more the wheels go here, the better it is, I guess, because then it's uh, leaning more forward. Yes, kind of, but then, but then you have to um, uh, what do you call it? Position your sensor in such a way that is that it only faces in the forward direction and not downwards because that will just hamper the distance distance measuring capability. Yeah, check that out. Okay, now remember that you, I told you guys that you might need a mini breadboard for this project. Yeah, this part is the mini yeah. breadboard just so you guys can mount the sensor on top of it and use jumper wires to connect it from here to the motor shield. Uh, you guys, now I told you it's, it's optional because you guys can also buy something known as the, um, I think it's called a, like a sensor holder or something. I don't know, it's some cheap plastic thing you can buy from Amazon or someplace to basically pos position your your sensor at a an degree angle. It's not really required, it's, it is optional. You can also use the bread breadboard itself, like I told before. Just mount the motor shield on it like that and just use jumper wires to connect it to the respective ports. Or you can also just build something from on on it like, like a cardboard piece or something. Just bend the cardboard, stick hot glue to it, and it's done. That may that may also work. And as I said above it, uh, there should be the Arduino above it, the motor shield. It's a really botched diagram, so just ignore if it just looks weird because it does. We have the nine volt battery over here. I haven't done wiring because well, it's, it's blend. I don't care for wiring. Yeah, you guys should be able to do the wiring yourself and based on the wiring you guys should also be doing the ports by yourself and and from the ports just comes the code itself and that's about it for the model so does anyone have any doubt on what the model is supposed to mean or any doubt in any component that is in the model uh, i had made a similar project before and i got a chassis and we four wheel set so can i use that one yeah, sure. Just be sure to modify your mm. code uh, pro pro appropriately, okay? Mm -hmm. Because then you have to use yeah. a, oh. a four-wheel drive instead of two-wheel. No, no, it's and a two-wheel drive. Only the front wheels do not have any more. No. Okay, then then you guys should be using... Mm. How, then just be sure to use the caster wheel because the caster wheel does come in handy a lot. Mm -hmm. You guys can also use those... No. Um, sure. Well, I don't know what's the name for them. You guys remember the uh, chair, wheels in, uh, chair wheels in computer lab? The really cheap chair wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys can also just 
um, put in a very smaller, small, smaller form factor version of it over here, it, it should work fine. Uh, the only thing you did not revolve very. Still, I, I prefer buying my caster. It's just what 10, 20 bucks. That's it. It may and it will handle like two, three days to come, or just buy it from Chandni, if if it's possible. Uh, and if all about the caster wheel, we just buy the caster wheel, put it in the front. That's it, and and adjust the motor based on the elevation of it. Okay, any more doubts in the model? I'll take that as no more doubts. I guess. I have a question. None. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I have a ball. Um, I do have a ball bearing. Can I use it at the for as the first one? Uh, sure. Does it? Uh, if if you can use it, if if it has a swivel and it can move in multi direction, then sure, why not? Okay. Yeah, Ariman, go ahead. You finish. Nah, no, I, I was saying I had no doubts whatsoever. Wish. Uh, let's go back to the PPT. That's how to build, and that's near the end end of the session for today. So all the materials will be sent to the server in due time. If not, please remind me. I may forget about it. A video of the project will be submitted. I'll try by next Wednesday. How's that sound? Anyway, uh, you guys have till after your boards. It's you have a very long time to like. Uh, you guys can even you guys can even study for. It. You can even innovate this project if you want. As as I said, this project is come. Is um seventy percent up to your imagination and just thirty percent bound by the rules I have just said. Just don't try to veer too much off course. That's about it actually. I try to stay in the server. We may actually you know we won't really give out any assignments or anything over the course of boards. Uh, because well, eleven, uh, ten, and twelve both have boards. Even I have boards. I know that has boards. So that may be a bit of a trouble for you guys. Oh, that will be a trouble for you guys. Uh, submission you guys should be following the same Google Drive format, um, unlike what happened last time when no one followed Google followed the Google Drive format. You guys can just send this code in the server, the video in the server if it if it works for you, or if you, if you just want to be very organized, just put it in the Google Drive. Be safe for be safe for it. That brings me to the end of my presentation today. Anurudha could not join us due to some issues to um to some issues anyway. So. Uh, does anyone have any doubt? Have any doubts? Anyone? No doubts. Uh, let's see. I'll just take the attendance real quick. Okay, I'll stop that.